This particular example was tried to be positioned as possibly the key decision for this organisation. Okay, it's the major purchase. That has a big impact, right? You don't want to be second guessing on absolutely everything. So this issue about relying on experts or relying on management, it's going to vary with the size of the decision. The bigger the decision, the more that it's a kind of bet the company decision, or the more that it has a significant impact on the organisation, the more that the law is going to say, well, did you really question it enough? Or did you rubber stick it? The smaller it is, right? the more of a rubber stick. So going in your favour about just accepting the manager, here is a trunk well, and it looks like a good discount. But what you haven't done is checked what were the alternatives. What, what are we giving up by saying is, yes, this looks good, but what else would we have done? And that hasn't been done. So because of that, you probably ask for some of those things. What have you compared it to? What are our other options? Because if you don't and something goes wrong, what we've learned particularly from, there's a, there's a case called the Bynes case, and the very recent James Hardy case, is the law is more and more questioning the assumptions, where the directors question the assumptions of management. Okay, so on what basis are you recommending this contract to? Show me where you've compared it to something, and this is the best deal. Show me that, no problems. Contracts are good, it's cheaper, believe in management. If it were a lesser decision, no, you wouldn't be expecting it. Covered a few things there. Do you have any questions about that? Or is that fairly common sense? Yes. Okay. Big decisions question the underlying assumptions. Um, oh, second last point is really important. It's, it's really old language, but I think it's very important. Board members and director, directors can't better their discretion. Okay? What, what does that actually mean? It means you can't say you're going to vote a certain way, irrespective of something. You can't always vote the way that management says. You've fettered your discretion. You, you, know, you have discretion which you must exercise. You can't promise a key group of clients or customers or the people who represent you that you will vote a certain way. You have to maintain your ability to think about issues and decide what you think is best for the organisation. And, and the last one, of course, is balancing risks against benefits. The whole thing, corporate governance came around because we have corporations, right? Why do we have corporations? Why don't we just keep having partnerships or sole traders? Why corporations? Kind of. Well, hey, there's a bit about getting capital together, but it's also protection to limit liability, right? So they can go broke. Think about that. The reason we have companies is so they can go broke, so they can take risk. The courts are very okay with directors taking risks, taking commercial risks. You're not sure how it's gonna pan out. It's balancing risk with reward. Okay, will it advance your mission a great deal? Yes, you can take a great deal of risk. And if you go broke, well, provided you go broke transparently right, and don't try and hide it, there's no legal problem. And now, don't take this to some saying go out and go broke. I'm not saying that at all. Right? But I'm saying the law won't have a problem with what you're actually doing. And don't be discouraged from taking risks. The law judges very, very rarely second guess the commerciality of the decision. They question the process. So in this case, for this decision about telecommunications, they're questioning the fact that you didn't know the alternatives, not the decision that it was good or bad. So even if it was the best decision, you could still be in problems because you didn't question 